Okay, so I'm gonna record Zoom style for just a little bit and then we'll try and come back to the, um, to the dog camera. camera. Um, okay, so we talked about how to name ions. Um, so we said anions are named, um, so they're always gonna be nonmetals. So we use an IBE at the end. So for example, green would become what? Chloride. Sorry, which one? Chloride. So chlorine would become chloride when it's an anion. Um, and then we said the names of ions are relatively simple for um, cations, right? Uh, for group one and group two, we just put the name of the metal and the word ion after it, right? If we have a transition or a post-transition metal, then we put the name of the metal with the charge in Roman numeral in parentheses, and then the word ion, right? So the next thing that we need to talk about are chemical bonds. So when we're talking about chemical bonds, we're talking about the glue that holds atoms together, okay? So we have atoms by themselves or atoms combined. When atoms combined, it's always through this process of a chemical bond, okay? Um, there's two main types of bonds, covalent bonds, and there's ionic bonds. So a covalent bond we'll mostly be talking about when we get into chapter four. Covalent bonds are characterized by sharing electrons, okay? Um, they share electrons. Um, these are the strongest kind of bond. Ionic bonds are characterized by transferring electrons. So this name implies that we're gonna be dealing with some ions. So that's what we're gonna be starting with in terms of naming things. We're gonna talk about ionic bonds first. So when we talk about ionic bonds, we're always talking about having two or more ions with opposite charges, right? Opposite charges, are attracted to each other, right? That's what sticks ionic bonds together. So if I have a cation, a positively charged ion, and an anion, I stick them together, right? I get an ionic bond. Is everybody comfortable with what we're talking about here? Questions? Can you give an example? Yes, I'm going to give so many examples, you're going to hate me for it. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to get definitions down so that we can hopefully get um, a screen that will work back. <laughs> okay. So, um, But it, it, does it make sense that if we have opposite charges that they'll be attracted to each other? Yes. Cool. So in the same way that positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons are attracted to each other, right? Um, cool. So ionic bonds, I tend to think about as being, um, so if covalent bonds are the strongest bonds, the glue that's holding these guys together, covalent bonds kind of like a marriage, right? So in terms of a relationship, a marriage strong, um, it's hard to break. It's very expensive to break. I've done this before, so I can speak to that. <laughs> um, so it's a very strong bond. It involves a lot of sharing, right? Now, not all sharing is going to be equal, and we'll talk about that more in chapter four. So um, you, I'm sure you guys have met people whose marriages are very um, not even keeled, right? So um, there can be some more taking on one side of that bond than others. Um, but generally speaking, the covalent bond um, is a shared bond. When we talk about an ionic bond, I think about that more as being like um, uh, the Tinder date of hooking up, right? So you've got the uh, that are compatible right? But um, they're not necessarily bound together as strongly. So it's easier to get them apart. Um, unlike a marriage where you're, it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, I like how you're comparing that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I know I'm recording this too, and it's going to be on the internet forever. I'm sure I'm going to get flack from, <laughs> from somebody. For that. I will remember this for sure with this little. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> memorable <laughs> <comparison>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Yes. So ionic bonds um, are, uh, they're still sticking things together, right? But they're not as strong. I'm going to try. 